what did you do during that period between Stoke and Millwall that enabled you to become better within your role? Yeah, spent a lot of time with um, key members of staff, uh, again, shaping a different philosophy. I felt at that point we'd come to a point where we needed to do something different. Uh, we worked a lot on playing a back five um, and making that well, back three, whatever you want to call it. I mean, if you say a back five, people think you're defensive, um, but there's opportunities to be very attacking in that formation. Um, I think I looked at a lot of the successful teams that had come out of the championship, looked at the Wolves team with Neves in and players like that. They played a five, played it really, really well really fluently, um, watched a lot of European teams, um, reflected a lot on the things I'd done and how I needed to be better, um, certainly. Um, tried to reshape some of the training methodology that we'd used and maybe freshen it up a little bit. Um, so really, it was, a, it was a general outlook of change up the way we work a little bit. You, you've always got an overview and a way that you're going to work and you always have to have that authenticity to how you work. But I think you can freshen little bits up. You can move forward and change one or two bits within your training, how you train, um, why you train in the way that you do. Um, you know, looked at a lot of the data around the championship and a lot of the data around how we'd worked over multiple clubs. Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of information, a lot of detail. Um, and again, an opportunity. One thing I did when I left Birmingham, I felt, I, I looked at my phone every day. You know, every day my phone rang, is that a job? Is that, a, you know, literally every time my phone rang, I thought, is that another job? Or is that a job I've been offered? And it felt quite a stressful period. It felt like I was waiting. I was waiting. It was three months of kind of waiting on an edge. Couldn't relax. And then after, after Stoke, one thing I decided to do, I decided just to let the next stage happen. Um, and tried to do, I, I went on about three or four, I was fortunate, but in football, you're not quite so fortunate. I went on about three or four holidays. I did quite a few things that I wanted to do previously. Um, and I really enjoyed that nine months. I, I felt as though it re-energized me. Um, and when Millwall came up, you know, one of the key remits for me was to go to a club that really, really knew what they were and what they were about. Um, and that wasn't, you know, that wasn't a sort of, disrespectful to any of the other clubs but I felt Millwall you know was quite a pragmatic club was quite a club that maybe fit the sort of stereotype I felt like I'd been given a little bit and and um, it allowed me just to go there and do what I wanted to do um, and play a different way we played a five straight away um, and did a lot of things differently so so yeah that period of time in between I think was so important um, and, and, it, and it allowed me to actually use it for once really effectively. Just on that then, Gary, so you mentioned obviously uh, coming towards the end of Millwall and, and realising that you, you need to maybe take a step away and, and have a bit of a breather and, and reflect and go again. Obviously, we can relate it to the Premier League with Klopp at the moment. Do you, is there similarities within that process of you know, what you think your role is at Millwall and obviously when you relate that to Klopp and the, the pressures and everything that's kind of associated with the football club. Do, do, do you relate to that then? Do, do you understand that process of what he's going through at that elite level? Yeah, look, I mean, you, you're never, yeah, you're never going to, I don't mean you're ever going to compare yourself to that type of manager because people will look at that as a, 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 as a black and white comparison and say, why are you doing that? But I think the situations are similar. And I think any manager that's been at a club a long time, particularly a manager like a clock, but when I see from afar, he manages with so much emotion. He manages with such a feeling for the players and a lot of man management, you know. And, and you know, part of my sort of management style is, uh, you know, from a man management perspective, I, I, I love those interactions with the players. I like those conversations with the players. Sometimes that takes a lot of energy to constantly do that all the time, lifting players on a Monday morning, leaving players out on a Friday having to then almost re-employ them on a Monday again. And, and that kind of circle that goes into that job and, and for someone like a clock to do that day in, day out to the levels that he's doing that and the pressures of a big football club, I think it's natural at some point to want to just step back and breathe um, and want to step back and be normal for a month, you know, and, 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 and I think that comes to an end for my, some managers can do it for 20 years and never feel that. You know, some managers might do it for two years and feel it. 
Um, you know, it's, it, I think every situation is personal and different, but but certainly I just felt at the end, I just felt there were a lot of things that had happened. Obviously, we'd lost our owner, John Berylson, um, you know, in a tragic accident this summer. And and I love I love James, who, who's now the chairman now. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of time for him, spoke a lot to him since, but uh, it just felt like that dynamic had changed a little bit. Um, and there were other things around it, but being away from home, I think, it just felt like a natural end. Um, and for the first time in my career, you know, I actually initiated that conversation, just said, look, it doesn't feel like it's working in the right direction. So we have a chat and see if there's something that, that works for everybody. And, and, and um, that's how it came about, you know, and I think it was just an honest conversation. It's, um, I'll, I, you know, I wouldn't do that very often, but it felt like the right thing to do at the right time. So, so, um, so yeah, I, yeah, I, like I said, I think it's an all-encompassing job. Look, it's a privilege. It's a brilliant job. You know, it's not even a. It's probably not even a job. It's doing something you love doing. You know, if you're passionate about football and you're passionate about the industry, it's so easy to do. Um, but it does take a lot from you, and it is a twenty-four-seven job. I've been on holiday, walking around a swimming pool at three in the afternoon, trying to sign a player for two hours. You know, there, there is no rest. There is no normality with it. Um, and I think your family tend to suffer. So, so there does come a point, I think, where you have to maybe think about them and, and think about what's the right thing. Um, you know, and, and after a breather, you often get that mojo back and a little bit of energy back. 